guys, welcome back to The Bright Side, Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're filming my top 10 books of 2019. So, it is the end of the year, it's December 27th, technically I still have 5 days to read left, but I exclusively read Christmas books pretty much in December, so I'm not really worried about them being like my favorite books of the year, just because that hasn't really ever happened and I'm not loving the book that I'm reading right now. So we're filming this just a little bit early, I am thinking that the audiobook I'm listening to is going to be on my favorites list, but it's part of a series, so I will talk about that tomorrow in my top 10 audiobooks of 2019. So in no particular order, we're just going to get started. Just keep in mind that these are my personal best books of the year. They are not all new releases, in fact very few of them are. They're just books that I happened to read this year and I picked my favorites and we're going to talk about them. I actually had kind of a reading slump type of year. I didn't read as many books as I expected. I actually swapped the year, which you guys will see in a stats video here soon, but last year I read about, I think, 90 something books and I listened to like 60 audiobooks or something like that. And this year I read 70 books and I listened to 90 audiobooks. So there are a lot more of my favorite favorites in my audiobooks just because I consumed more. So the averages were different. So this year was interesting. Two graphic novels made it on the list. I'm going to talk about those first. My first book I'm going to talk about slash series. This entire series is the saga series by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I think Fiona does the art for these. So I read a lot more graphic novels this year than I have in a while and I liked a lot of them quite a bit. This series just gave me all the feels. This is an adult graphic novel. It is very graphic and very, very adult. I mean, even the first page kind of almost makes you not want to read it because there's just a lot of sexual content and weird sexual content. That part I didn't love, but I guess that's just part of the no graphic novel world. But I still really, really enjoyed the series. This is about two lovers from different planets, different types of species. It's sci-fi, set in the future, intergalactic situation, and they have a baby and they kind of have to run and hide because both sides are mad that they mated, basically. So, and it's just like a Romeo and Juliet type story, but you're basically following the life of their baby, so it's her life is the saga and she's kind of telling you the story. So I really enjoyed it. It was very heart-wrenching. The last one that I read, the ninth issue, was just like, what the frick? This book had like one of the worst ending hangovers um, for book nine that I've ever read. Like it was a really bad cliffhanger and they don't really have any information about when the next one's coming out. I think they're making this into a TV show. I really hope so because I really enjoyed it and I'm not even that much of a graphic novel type of person. So. Saga made the list. Next one that made the list was Nimona. I can't remember the author's name, but it'll be up here on the picture for you guys. So this is a one story graphic novel. It's a large graphic novel about a shape shifting teenager in a fantasy setting where people are kind of trained to be bad guys and good guys and she finds this one bad guy and she latches on to him and she just wants to be like his assistant and he kind of doesn't want anything to do with it and he has a nemesis good guy, but really, all the lines are like morally gray and it is hilarious. This was also one of my favorite audiobooks, but I'm putting it on this list because I need more books for my red list. It was narrated by Rebecca Solar in a full cast and had sound effects and it's only like two hours. It was so great, but I do recommend reading this either before you listen to the audiobook or with the audiobook because the visual stuff is just too great. It was funny, it was cute, it was fantastical, it was heartwarming. I loved it so much and I need to buy a copy like ASAP. Next up, there's almost always a mermaid book on the list, and it was The Mermaid by Christina Henry. So this is just a little short book, and it's very different than all the other mermaid books I've ever read because it's kind of historical fiction. So we're talking about like P.T. Barnum and his circus, and he hears rumors about this mermaid um, in this certain island or this certain like beachy town and he sends his assistant to go and fetch her and he doesn't realize that she actually is a mermaid so there's like a twist on it there and it just talks a lot about like history of the circus and the way that the performers were treated and people were treated and wasn't necessarily the best but also there's like a little love story in here and you've got the fantastical element with the mermaid and it was just so amazing it had such a great ending and it was one of my favorite reads obviously of the year but it's very underrated and I feel like even if you don't like mermaids you'd really like this book because it's got a lot of other things into it. They talk about like women's rights and stuff as well but in a very like 
mild and not in your face kind of a way and I just loved it it was so sweet and like soft-spoken but meaningful at the same time so this one one of my faves so September and October were my best reading months of the year or at least my favorite reading months of the year so I actually have quite a few like spooky reads on here which is kind of interesting because sometimes I hate them and I DNF them but I think I have like four or five in total so the first one we're gonna talk about is this dark endeavor by Kenneth Opal this is about young Victor Frankenstein um, when he's a teenager and it's basically like what happened like in his childhood that kind of led up to the Frankenstein story and so you're following him and Elizabeth and Henry and also his brother Conrad who's his twin brother and Conrad gets sick and so Victor and Elizabeth and Henry try to figure out a way to save him. They find all this mysterious stuff leading up to their history of their family and they go on crazy adventures and it's very fantastical. It reads slightly more like a middle grade book just because the adventures are kind of like out there and there's like a magical cat and it was a lot more like magical than I expected and not just... I don't know, it didn't just stretch reality, it was like straight up magic in here, so I really liked that. I especially liked the second book, it's a duology, and it kind of stuck with me and I kind of still think about it, so I really, really enjoyed this one. Next up is The Picture of Dorian Gray, my only classic on this list, and technically one of the only classics I read this year. I was blown away by this. This was almost my favorite read of the year. I couldn't really decide, but this is way, 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 way up there. I couldn't believe how fast I read this. I read this in two days and the reason I didn't read more classics this year is because they usually take a longer time to read even though they're shorter. So this one's like 200 pages but it's very wordy, very descriptive. I don't want to give away too much but it's about a young man that has a painting, a magical painting, and he's very vain and he learns a life lesson. <laughs> That's all I want to say. It was way different than I expected but so much better than I expected it to be. There was just a lot of in-depth characters in here and you learn a lot about humans and life and I just, it was so beautifully written. I can't wait to read more from Oscar Wilde. I was literally obsessed with it. I read it so fast and I couldn't get my face out of this book. Like look how dense this is. Like there's hardly any dialogue. I mean there is dialogue but there's a lot of descriptions and stories and ah, I loved it. It has like a warm special place in my heart and this made my like Halloween slash fall just great. Continuing on with the spookier reads, Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Turns out I love books with added elements of like formats, chat logs, diary entries, newspaper clippings. Even one I read this year that I really didn't like, I still read in like two days because I love it. And there's technically not like an ending. Like there are chapters in here, but they're so short that you just want to keep going. So this one's almost 500 pages and I also read this in like two or three days. Obsessed with it. Ending's a slightly lackluster, but I was like kind of okay with it too because of something that happens. So this is about a journalist who has always been kind of obsessed with this one filmmaker who does a lot of like cult horror type films and he even like switches to doing these films that don't even get like presented in movie theaters because they're so dark and disturbing and he has this cult following and there's like secret websites dedicated to this with information and then his daughter kills herself and this journal guy becomes obsessed with the idea that maybe she was murdered and kind of is looking back at the history of her family and discovering more about her parents and her dad who his name is Cordova. He's had several wives, he's big in Hollywood, he's got an estate that he never really left and filmed all his movies there and there's just so much detail and there's so much like surrealism and oh, I love this. So I also have another Marisha Pestle book that made my favorites list that I'll talk about tomorrow but I thought this was fabulous. It's an adult book, it definitely has some more graphic content into it but not as much as I expected actually and it was one of my favorite reads of the year. And the last spoon or read that was on this list was the whole Stocking Jack the Ripper, Ripper series except for book four because I haven't read it yet. <laughs> but my very favorite was the second one, Hunting Prince Dracula. So these are basically gothic horror mystery. So we're following Audrey Rose and she is apprenticing to be a forensic scientist and you know dissect dead bodies and figure out how they died and so it's got like a very Sherlock Holmesy type of vibe to it. She meets up with her uncle and we have Thomas Cresswell and they're basically like solving mysteries and murders and like 
things like that. And things just always go crazy around them. These are a little bit like far-fetched, obviously. Um, just murders just follow Audrey Rose everywhere, which seems convenient, but I really liked it. This one is set in Romania, a castle that kind of has something to do with Dracula around it. And so there's like these murderies that keep happening that's somewhat vampire-esque. And I don't know how to explain it, but I really liked it. This is one of my new favorite series. It's just really, really fun. It was a little more graphic than I was expecting, but I was kind of okay with it for the fall time. So I hope to finish this last book in 2020. Next up is Haunted by Megan Spooner. Megan Spooner basically became one of my favorite authors this year. I read this book so fast and I loved it so much and it gave me so many feelings which hasn't been happening as much lately which is kind of sad. I've been getting more of those feelings through audiobooks just because there's that added element of the narrator and sound effects and things too but this one was awesome. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's set kind of in, I think in Russia, I could be really wrong, in like the 1800s, something like that. I'm not sure, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read this. We need character Yiva and her family and her sisters. And then in between those chapters, we have these awesome little woodsy pages and they're chapters from the beast and like his journal entries. It just has little added elements, kind of like night film that just really make the book for me and I loved those beast chapters. At first I wasn't sure, I thought they were a bit too much, but as the story progressed I liked them more and more. There's a fantastical magical element in this. There is an amazing love story, but there's also a lot about Eva's family, her father and her sisters, and there's little side stories with them. I love book stories with sisters in them and I just thought this was precious and I loved it so much and I also loved Megan Spooner's new book as well, which I'll talk about again tomorrow. We're going to talk about Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. This is hilarious. This is my favorite Lee Bardugo book. This is a collection of short stories set in the Grishaverse. So Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows, all of that kind of jazz. You don't have to read those books to read these, but I think it kind of adds to it. This, first of all, is one of the most beautiful books I own. It's so lovely. And then the chapters have the most beautiful illustrations in them. You can see that there's like a castle, and then as you read, the the illustrations get longer and bigger. And then my favorite one was the mermaid one, and there's even a nutcracker one in here. So they're kind of based off our fairy tales, but twisted for Grisha. Some of them are unique, I believe. Or maybe they're like twists on Russian fairy tales. I don't know. They were awesome. I loved all of them. It was so magical and immersive, and you could picture everything, and they were so much fun to read about, and I loved it. And then my last favorite book of the year, which is one of the top, top ones and the most surprising, I think, and I don't own it, which is super sad, is Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy by Cassandra Clare and a couple other authors. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue on with Cassandra Clare after I read the trilogy, The Infernal Devices. Her first six book series and then I read the three book Infernal Devices and I really liked them but they're quite long and they're a lot of work and then the series just keeps going and going and building up and I didn't know if I was liking them enough to continue. I started this one in 2018. I read two chapters. I wasn't feeling it. This is a bunch of short stories kind of set in the Shadowhunter world. And then I don't know what happened, but I decided in January just to give it a shot. And I was like, if I don't like this, I'm not going to read Lady Midnight. And the third and fourth stories I loved so freaking much. I was just blown away. And then I kept reading and I kept loving them. And I love the plot twist. And I don't know if I've just been with the characters long enough that I just gave up and fell in love or what. I loved it so much. I read Lady Midnight and I really, really enjoyed this. Again, this was like a 600 page book and I read it very quickly. It was just so surprising. I wanted to tell my husband about it and I was just so excited that I fell in love with a Cassandra Clare book finally. This is still my favorite Cassandra Clare book. The only thing that I don't like, technically a novella should be in addition to the story for those like diehard fans and it shouldn't be anything crucial to the story that you have to read before you read the next book. So it should just be like a different perspective or some bonus content. But this one, I feel like you 100% have to read this before Lady Midnight. It adds so much and you'll miss some details if you don't and you might be a little confused because you get introduced to some characters in here. This was basically another book in the series. It was not just a bunch of novellas that were slapped together. Like this is another book in the whole world of the Shadow Hunters. So I will definitely be reading the Bane Chronicles and also any other novella sets like Shadow Market and stuff that come out because I loved it so much. Okay, you guys, so those are all of my top 10 books for 2019. 
I really enjoyed most of these quite a bit. Again, not my best reading year, but I still had some really good gems and good finds. I'm a little bit more excited about the books I'm talking about tomorrow for my audiobook wrap up. Once that's available, I will link it up here in the cards for you guys and down below in the description. So let me know your top 10 favorite physical reads of 2019 or just anything you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time tomorrow for my audiobook list. Bye.